All right. Hi, Chris. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. Welcome to your High Vibe Life series. I appreciate you for your time to be with us. I'm excited to learn about, um, you know, what you have to offer. So Lots blessed to be a part. That's awesome. So Chris Kendall earned, er, earns his bananas flowing as a registered holistic nutritionist. I want to make sure that I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting the bananas part, right? Yes, you are. Absolutely. At raw and transitional lifestyle coach, uh, a Kindalini yoga creator. I don't even know what that is. And a raw <laughs> food chef. So we're going to ask him more about that. A 15 year raw vegan. Chris shares all that brings him bliss through running raw food, yoga adventures, retreats, sharing, lecturing at festivals, singing raw parody songs as well. Oh, are you going to sing for us? <laughs> I could if you like, sure. Uh, you know what? Just I'm planting the seed. I'm planting yeah. the seed. And he's written a, a whole slew of wonderful ebooks, and he has an amazing uh, variety of recipes that he's going to tell us how we're going to get a hold of them. Absolutely, yeah. for sure. And, and let's get right down to the topic. I mean, just reading your bio, you definitely live a high vibrational life. Um, you are an avid skateboarder. Yeah. And you've, you've, never, you've never quit skateboarding. No, the, the longest I've ever quit skateboarding is because of injuries and I've had my fair share, which has in turn kind of led me into doing what I do now to get the best recovery possible. But uh, yeah, the longest I've ever taken was a year. I was in a motorcycle accident last year, and it wasn't mm -hmm. quite a year. It was eight months, and then probably nine years ago, ten years ago, I fractured my back, and I took like seven months off too. But uh, yeah, skateboarding has been my backbone. Oh my goodness! Like the, I mean, uh, the accident and the the two accidents they don't sound high vibe, and you still <laughs> like got back up onto your skateboard. So let, let's actually go there and. Um, how did you get into what you're doing today? And, and do you, when you, on a scale of one to 10, you know, of, of vibration, you know, where are you at today? Today, I, you know, I just got back from the gym, had an awesome time there, pushed it real hard and did a little bit quicker to make sure I was in time for this. And I'm feeling great. I'd say I'm at about like an 8.5 out of 10, 10 being like, I'm jumping up and down screaming because I'm so happy. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm 8.5, maybe nine, even, you know, I'm doing pretty darn good, to be honest. Got a big smoothie Beautiful. talking to you, connecting and, with everyone. And, to, you know, today you're going to share with us like some of the more nutritional um, mm -hmm. benefits of eating healthy. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to hear more about that. And how did you get into what you're doing today? Well, you know, I mean, I'll briefly start back when I was five years old, I started skateboarding and it just took over my life. Like it became literally what I thought I was here meant to do. And it, really, truthfully, it is, you know, I mean, it's one of my favorite activities. It's a great community. I get to connect and travel and grow with so many people. Uh, and when I got to be about 18, though, I was partying and drinking a ton, smoking a couple things and wasn't feeling so high vibe anymore. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, I got to a place where I was so low vibing that I was contemplating suicide. I'd be on airplanes wishing for them to crash. Uh, I oh had candida, I had brain fog, I had joint pain. I wasn't recovering well. And I found yoga. Yoga transformed my life. I started doing it every day. I started reading kind of the philosophy around it, understanding karma and the implications of the food we put in our bodies, not only for ourselves, but for the world around us. Mm. So I needed to research more into nutrition. And uh, I found a book called Fit for Life, which changed my whole view on nutrition. It really wow. talked about food combining. So that's eating certain things together for optimal digestion because we, are what, we aren't what we eat. We are what we absorb. So I really started to learn about that. Uh, I started eating fruit for breakfast and learning more about vegetarian and vegan foods. And uh, since then, you know, that's been 18 years now. I've had two sick days in 18 years. And it really just kind of streamlined me into learning more and more about plant-based nutrition. Um, I went to school to become a registered holistic nutritionist just over 15 years ago. At that time, I'd been kind of transitioning from standard American to a high raw vegan diet. And uh, six months into my schooling, I met a raw foodist who had been a raw foodist for 27 years at that time. He's one of my longest term mentors, Dr. Douglas Graham. He's really great. And after meeting him, going to his lectures, I went raw overnight. And literally that first day, first day raw, my whole paradigm on life shifted. It went from 
doing everything I can to skateboard more and recover faster from skate from my skateboarding. That was the only reason I was in school. That's the only reason I was researching nutrition, but it seriously opened my heart so wide and just make, made me feel so connected with myself and with everyone else that I knew like, this is my purpose. This is really what it is. Like skateboarding is a great tool and a means to meet other people, to spread this message, but spreading the message of high vibes of holistic health of raw food is what I'm here for. And I've been doing that for 15 years since, you know, it took me five years of really applying it, learning everything I could to get to a place where I felt really comfortable and competent to spread the message and do like consultations and write books and be professional with it. And the last decade, that's all I've done full time is travel around, spread the message of health and high vibes through raw food. And, and you create, you created a whole like business around it. That's awesome. You know, I think that's part of the possibilities of, in today's age it's like we can literally find some problems out there in the world find some solutions that worked for us yeah. and actually create um a business around it so that's what i i'm hearing that you you've done you know you found things that change your life mm -hmm. and you're now spreading that knowledge absolutely we're, we're in such a blessed time you know like we have more opportunity that it, and at any time in history you know, anything that is really our passion, anything that we have extra expertise in, we can turn into a business, you know, and it doesn't have to start full time. It can be side, but it yeah. can turn into full time if that's what you really believe in. And that's what you really want. That's great. And, and I love the fact that, you know, like I was saying, you're, you're skateboarding, you started at five. I actually have a five-year-old son. Yeah. So I'm kind of imagining him on a skateboard and I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you fell in love with it and you continued on. You actually continue on because how many of us uh, you found a thing that we love to do as a child, but as we grew up, right? It's like, oh, we don't have time for the dancing or the sport. You know, maybe it's basketball or hockey or right now the, the, the big theme is basketball, right? Yeah, basketball's like, fun. Who has time for that, right? So I love the fact that you actually continued on with your love um, of skateboarding and you found ways to support that. Yeah. And then, and then you, you, you share that you, you um, came across a time in your life where you didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. And then you found yoga. Yeah, <laughs> was it, was it a book, too. did you say? Was it a book or someone just introduced you to yoga? You know, it's, it's kind of funny looking back, but uh, I was in Walmart and it was one of those bulk bins that just had tons of VHS tapes for like two ninety nine, <laughs> And there was a, a Rodney intermediate, intermediate uh, athletes yoga. And I just put it in the v, VHS VCR and, and uh, I started doing that every day, like nonstop until it became so second nature that I didn't need the tape anymore. That's hilarious. Yep, Walmart changed the, my life. The defining moment was in the bin at Walmart, two ninety nine. Yep, yeah. yeah. The clearance section of these VHS tapes. Yeah, I wish I still had that tape. I don't anymore, but. Uh, and and th I mean, that's kind of how life works too, right? Like you have these messages. Yep. And then you went for it, and you 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 gave it a try. And I, you know, I love that message too, right? Like, you know, maybe you have a hunch and something, or you want to, you have an inkling to try something or talk to someone new mm -hmm. or explore a new country or city. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm imagining that your thought process is the same, like, go for it. Why not? Absolutely. I've, I've really learned to trust my intuition. And when I feel it pulling on me, pulling on my heartstrings, pulling on my mind, I, I listen, you know, and sure, sometimes you bypass it because something else seems more important, but it comes back and it gets louder. And the more you listen to it, the more clear and precise it gets too. So I've, I've always really listened to that. I've really listened to my passion, the things that really light me up that I just feel abundant and strong and clear and focused on. Mm -hmm. Sporting and nutrition have been big, big ones there for me. So yeah, so let's talk nutrition. You know, I love doing these interviews because I get to learn so much about worlds that I I'm not very familiar with. So yeah. I'm definitely not a raw vegan. Yeah. Um, I you know I I need to eat more raw food. I know that I need to eat more veggies and and fruit. Right. So let's let's talk about you know for the ones who are not in the journey of wanting to. Yeah. become a raw anything yeah I love, I love to hear your advice to incorporate more of it 
yeah. into our life and, and why? Like, you know, you've had this like transformational um, experience yourself, but through working with clients, can you share with us kind of the benefits, um, the holistic benefit? Because you, you talked about not, it's not just for you. Yeah, it's also absolutely. for the planet too. So absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Let's, hear, let's hear the benefits. Okay, well, let, let's start there, you know, and I mean, we can acknowledge that right now we're the sickest we've ever been in the history. Like we, we live longer, but we have more diseases. Um, we're polluting the planet more than ever, you know, and it's really interesting. Dr. Gregor, who's a pretty awesome uh, MD out there, he puts out tons of free information, lots of, uh, lots of videos. I believe it's uh, nutritionfacts.org or something like that. But anyways, he has a, he has a study out there showing the highest reason for all cause mortality. So like the highest reason for people dying out of any disease is under consumption of fruit. I'll say oh, that again. Wow. The highest cause of all, all cause mortality is under consumption of fruit. Just by increasing fruit consumption, we can reduce the risk of almost every single disease out there. Wow, now, that's crazy. Pretty cool. And this is really backed up by science. And you guys can check it out on nutritionfacts.org, uh, Dr. Gregor, Michael Gregor. But anyways, um, going a little bit deeper than that as well, what I really like to look at, I like to look at basics and I like to look at science as well as nature. And when we look out to nature and we look to the animals that are the closest genetically to us, we see the bonobo chimpanzee. They're between 99.4 to 99.9% .9 genetically similar to us. To the extent that that's even been said that a, a male bonobo is closer genetically to a male human than a male human is to a female human. So we're very, very similar to them. Now, uh, we'll take it another step further and we'll look at all the primates. Out of all the primates, the bonobo eats the most fruit, still eats a lot of greens, and has a very small amount of insects and occasional animal products, usually in kind of border and squirmish like a food disputes over like, hey, we found this fig tree first, you guys can't come, can't come eat it, mm -hmm. right? But uh, that shows us one thing, you know, I mean, when we look at uh, physiology and anatomy, we are set up to eat fruits and vegetables in their raw natural state. We are really adaptive species, we can travel all over the world, we can eat almost anything, we can find ways to eat it. But when it comes back to what we have been eating for the longest period of time on the planet, it really goes back to fresh fruits and vegetables and a little bit of other stuff. We're opportunists, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we look a little bit further as well, we can recognize that us and our domesticated animals that we feed, and generally when we're feeding ourselves or when we're feeding domesticated animals or food animals, whatever we want to say, you know, they're usually foods that they're not biologically, physiologically designed for. You know, we're feeding cows like corn and soy. They're not really designed for that. You know, we're feeding our animals or companion animals like dry kibble foods. They're not really designed for that. And us and our domesticated animals suffer from the same and similar degenerative diseases. And we have the higher, higher disease rates than any other animals in nature. Every single other animal in nature besides us and our domesticated animals and the animals we feed eats raw plant foods or raw meats, the foods that they're designed for to eat, right? Mm. Um, so these are just some simple basic concepts looking at nature like everything on the planet was designed to eat raw food we just as a species have chosen to break away from that and it hasn't been to our benefit now that could be a much deeper conversation kind of going into you know a whole bunch of different areas which i'm happy to go into but the simplest part of it is that we definitely for sure know that raw fruits and leafy green vegetables are among or the healthiest possible foods for us calorie per calorie Everyone mm -hmm. knows their health food. So it just comes down to how do we get more in, you know? And yes. one thing that I think is really important is recognizing that you don't have to do anything. It's not good or bad, right or wrong. It's just about choices and consequence. You can crowd out some of your foods. You don't have to give up all your favorites, but you can instead find some new favorites and eat some more of those. And mm -hmm. then slowly edges out some of the other stuff. Because as you eat more fruits and vegetables, you feel better you look better and it becomes its own motivation. So some really simple tips, really simple tips. One would be eat fruit on an empty stomach. Fruit digests really fast. And if we eat cooked food and then we have fruit as dessert, which is really common, there's a lot of chance for fermentation, bloating, burping, and even then possibly troubles on the way out. So that's why some people think fruit doesn't work for me because they eat hash browns and toast and then have a big glass of orange juice and they get an upset stomach. So Eat fruit first, 
on an empty stomach. And that is usually best accomplished for breakfast. So I would recommend most people start their day with some water, get some light activity, get their system moving, clear out waste, because they may have some stuff from yesterday in their stomach still too. If you're burping mm -hmm. up food, you want to wait until your stomach is actually empty and then start your day with a big green smoothie or a big bowl of fruit or um, some just a, you know some whole fruit, whatever it is, whatever your favorite is. That's my number one rule is when you're looking at fresh fruits and vegetables, don't look at it as health food and the things you should eat are the ones that are the most nutritious. Instead, look at the fruits and vegetables you love the most okay. and enjoy them as much as you can. No restriction. I mean, Got it. I have so a big start, smoothie. Start here. with the ones you love. Start with the ones you love. Because it just makes it so much easier to like want to eat it. Exactly. Because yeah, if you're yeah. just like, oh, broccoli is the health or kale is the healthiest, but I, I hate it. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to stick with it. But if you start eating, you know, if you love mangoes and strawberries and you have mangoes and strawberries for breakfast when they're in season, you're going to be so stoked. And when they're out of season, you're going to be like, I can't wait till they're back in season because that's what I want. And then you find something else you like. And that's one of the blessings and gifts of Mother Nature is that she changes it up for us month per month, season per season so that we never get sick of it. Because when, when mangoes are out, all of a sudden the beautiful melons are in or, mm -hmm. you know, the beautiful grapes are in, right? So we get to choose different things we love. Got it. Yeah, that, that's a great tip. I love it. I mean, uh, with the kids, right? Like they don't love asparagus. Yeah. And then sometimes I'm like, come on, just try it, try it. And what you're saying is just find out the, the ones that they actually love and have them eat more of that. Like let's start with the basics. <laughs> exactly. And calorie for calorie, they're the most nutrient dense foods out there. So they're going to be getting a lot of good stuff. And if you treat fruit as a meal, understand like most people eat a breakfast that's between 750 calories, maybe to a thousand, depending upon who they are, you know, and it might be even as low as 500. But if we're going to make fruit a breakfast, it's important to actually make that fruit breakfast around the same calories. Otherwise you're going to be hungry in half the time. You know, I, I meet people who they start to eat a fruit breakfast and they go, you know, I had a half a grapefruit and an orange and I was hungry an hour later. Well, yeah, that was probably about 65 calories and you're used to like 600 calories, right? Mm -hmm. So um, a good measure is a banana is about 100. So like five bananas in a smoothie with a handful of greens can be a, a decent replacement for some people. You know, this one here is a lot bigger than that. Um, and otherwise, you know, round fruits like apples, oranges, peaches, nectarines, generally they're about 60 calories each, you know, so uh, yeah. that's a good ballpark. And I appreciate that you shared in how many years that you've only been sick twice. Yeah. And you know what? Truthfully too, those two days, they were separate days. So it was like one day here, one day there. And they were within the same year. And it was during a time where I was really taking a lot on us, stretching myself thin. And I could mm -hmm. honestly say it's more from stress that I actually just, I felt under the weather. And for that day, I just chose not to eat. And I slept all day in both cases. And then the next day I was totally fine. So got it. Got it. Um, so uh, going back to our topic, you know, living your high vibrational life and, mm -hmm. and, you know, living in your gift, your purpose and, and having that energy. Like I, I love everything that you're saying so far, you know, one is the whole, your background, which is you're doing what you love and you continue to do what you love. Yeah. Right. Like you don't, you don't quit that no. And with the same philosophy with the fruits and vegetables. It's like pick the ones you love first. Absolutely. Like don't force yourself to eat kale if you don't like kale. No, exactly. You know, Just because it's a little bit more like nutrition, nutritional, nutritional, more yeah. nutritious. Yeah. Oh, good. And, and the fun thing too is like, you know, for example, this is a big banana smoothie, but it has about like half a pound of greens in it and you can barely taste them. And that's a great way to help get in greens for kids and, and for yourself too. If you don't feel like you have the time or don't want to eat like a giant salad, you know, the greens have huge benefit you can put a lot in a banana smoothie or in an orange smoothie. And, and in the world of like frozen fruits and vegetables, like are they just as nutritious? And I want to like just touch slightly on the whole world of pesticides, like concern around that. Yep. Like can you speak to that as well? Absolutely. So, I mean, if I'm looking at uh, nutrition and number one choices, it's always going to be fresh, ripe, raw, organic plant foods, you know, or wild, you know, if I, I went to my sister's house and I picked all of her dandelions because dandelion greens are way more nutritious than the foods you find in the store. You know, weeds grow deep into the earth, whereas a lot of the greens you find in the store just go in the first few inches of topsoil. Like literally, you're eating the dandelions from her yard? Yeah, dandelion greens, flowers, stems, roots, all edible, all super nutritious. They're a little and bitter. Just, and you just stick it in a smoothie? Can you do that? 
Yeah, hundred percent. You can just throw them in a smoothie, you know. Um, so I feel like I'm so green in this topic. <laughs> oh, it's all fun. It's all fun. I mean, when picking weeds is very important to make sure you know what you're picking. So only dandelions because there are some that look like dandelions a little bit, but they aren't dandelions. So okay. you want to make sure. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to stick to like my favorite fruits and veggies first. I think I'm going to stick exactly. to that. Before that's I venture out to, to dandelions on, in the yard. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's that's a really good place to start. That's definitely yeah. a really good place to start. That's awesome. So so speak to like um yeah I I totally like cut your train of thought. I'm I'm cutting okay. myself now. <laughs> it's all good. So the, uh, you said organic, mm -hmm. raw, fresh is the best. Okay, what's that's the, the second second level? So the Grocery second store, level from there. Store? Yeah, you know the second level from there would be um fresh ripe raw conventional produce you know and and picking from the clean 15 or the middle 21 you know i mean there is also the the dirty dozen right so that kind of speaks to the organics and stuff like that and to pesticides it's been shown that the dirty dozen has the highest level of pesticides fungicides all the different sides you know fries on the side the ones we don't necessarily want uh and the reason there being is that they just have higher levels of these pesticides that have been shown to cause, uh, cause issues in the body, potential cancers. Um, I mean, it's also just shown the more pesticides we have. I don't they, even understand you know, why they still sell it. It's well, it's, it's really tough because it is just, it's an industry. All, that's the, that's the, the, the short of it is fruits and vegetables, they aren't putting them necessarily out there for the highest nutrient content and the best taste. They're putting them out there for the most yield, to make the most money, for the longest shelf life. Mm -hmm. And they've been told Aeronos, I can't say that word right. Falsely, they've been told that by using these pesticides that they're going to get greater yields, make better money, but they're not looking long term. Maybe short term it does, but it slowly degrades the soil. It makes worse quality product. Um, you know, bugs and weeds become resistant. They need more sprays. It causes human health issues. So they've been, so they've been sold a line of goods that they're just like promised the world. And then it's become more corporate and bigger companies that just they fall along those because it, it greases the wheels, right? So it's a sad reality, but for every dollar we vote for, that's what we're going to get more of, right? So if we buy more organic food, we're going to get more organic food. Mm. If we start growing our own, then it's even cheaper, right? So yeah. um, it just comes down to our choices. But, you know, there is the clean 15 and the middle 21, and those ones are foods Can you that tell me the clean, like, top five? If I, I don't know your numbers. <laughs> If I can take just a second, I'll be able to find it uh, right here because I actually have it uh, on my phone in a pretty close place here. So, and we'll um, make sure we'll I'll ask you for for some like favorite links and resources, and we'll share it in the email of this uh, series. Absolutely, no, I definitely can do that too. Um, here we go. So for the clean fifteen, we got mushrooms, broccoli cantaloupes, cauliflower, cabbage, kiwis, asparagus, eggplant, papayas, onions, sweet peas that are frozen, pineapple, sweet corn, and avocados. Mm, and what does it mean, clean 15? Those are the ones that have the least amount of uh, residues of any chemicals. So those are the ones that aren't as important to buy organic. Got it. The ones to, that are really important, the dirty dozen to buy organic, and these have like really high levels, are strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomato, celery, and potatoes. So those are the ones that are more important to buy um, organic. To buy organic, and something that's just kind of general for me as well is like. If I can't peel it, if I'm not going to peel it, if it's something really thin like greens, it's, it's just likely better to have organic. If I can peel it like a mango or an orange, it's not quite as important. And I mean, there is the planetary aspect and you want to be doing the best for, for the health of the planet as well. And then that points more towards organic and wild crafted and, wi and wild itself. But, uh, but in general, you know, again, my priorities are to eat fresh, raw plant foods, you know? So even like if it's frozen, like it's better to look for organic frozen typically right? typically but not always because i mean for one you know the sweet peas frozen sweet peas was in the clean uh, 15 but another aspect of that if the grower knows that they're going to pick it and immediately freeze it and mm -hmm. put it away they're not going to need to put as much sprays on it than for stuff that they're going to ship because some of the sprays are for shelf life and 
for a whole bunch of other reasons, right? So, right. so frozen in my mind could have less to toxic chemicals present, but it's not a given always. It depends upon the crop. Got it. But okay. frozen is a great choice. So I would say fresh, organic, fresh, conventional is first choice. Um, fresh or sorry, frozen, organic, frozen, conventional will be third and fourth. And then from there, it'd be like organic cooked, uh, conventional cooked, and then dehydrated is in the kind of the same boat as that. Mm -hmm. but those are things that for myself, I would recommend having less, you know, less of and be focusing more on the first four categories of fresh uh, and frozen raw or, or sorry, organic or conventional. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, you know, if you feel better internally and physically, like you just have more energy to do the things that you love to do. So um, 100%. it's a really important topic that I, I'm, that's why we have you here, right? To remind yeah. me and the rest of the, our audience members yeah. to, because like you said, everybody knows like it's not, it's not like a new thing, right? Fruits yeah. and vegetables are important to have and they're good for you. <laughs> yeah. It's funny though, right? Cause everyone knows their health food. Everyone talks about them being some of the healthiest foods for us. But then when somebody like myself or someone else goes, I'm just going to eat health food. People go, Oh my God, is that healthy? You know, it's like, <laughs> wait a second. Like we were just talking about how these are the healthiest foods, you know, it's like, but it, it, the thing about it is, is you need to eat enough calories. Cause even if you're eating the healthiest foods, if you're not eating enough calories, you're going to slowly waste away. And I've seen that happen. And you know, fresh fruits and vegetables are very satiating, meaning they really please you. They really make you feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. And so people can feel satisfied on lower amounts, but still actually need more because they're just not used to feeling that satisfied and eating such high water, high fiber content food. So it takes eating a lot. But to me, that's not a problem. I, I like food. If I can eat more of my favorite foods and feel better and feel more high vibing and feel really fit and great, even better. And your journey started with the yoga you know, yeah. Walmart 299 VHS, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'd like to ask you, you know, a, um, a topic that I've been interested in for the last year is the morning routine, right? Like all the leaders, business leaders and, and uh, authors out there talk about how important it is for the, yeah. the morning routine. So what are some of your like morning rituals? Well, you know, it is the start could sound kind of funny, but for me, it works really well. I like to wake up and just quickly check some of my things. I know that sounds pretty bad, but I like to check, you know, like my email and my Instagram, uh, just message. That's like board. the thing that they tell you not to do. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not saying this is necessarily good, but I'm just being honest. This is what I yeah. do. So like, yeah, I just, and, and I, just, I think I, that the thing is to find what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I literally, I just spend 10 minutes. Like I, if, if it's a major thing, I know it's going to take a lot of time. I don't do it. But if it's something I can just quickly go, just check it off my list. I spend five, 10 minutes while I'm still kind of stretching and rolling in bed. And then I get up have a bunch of water. And what I've been doing recently is going right to the gym. I like to go there on an empty stomach. And this kind of comes back to high vibing is, you know, most people don't recognize that a heavy meal, especially one that isn't food combined well, that utilizes a lot of heavy foods, like, you know, let's say the, the standard like potatoes and meat and vegetables and milk, it can take up to 60% of our blood flow going to our stomach to digest. That's why after like a heavy Thanksgiving dinner, some people literally fall asleep because it takes so much energy. Mm -hmm. um, a heavy meal can take more energy than running, like jogging around the block. So right. It takes, it takes a pasta, lot of energy. Pasta does that to me. It's, it's really you dense. Pasta is like, you just like, want to take a nap. <laughs> exactly. Whereas, you know, fruits, you know, they're virtually pre-digested. Like you can have a meal of fruit that would take 20% of your blood flow. So that's 40 extra percent of your blood flow to go to all the other functions in your body it leads you to feeling brighter, lighter, and more energetic and high vibing, right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so is that it? You go to the gym and then, and then you go to your fruit? Nope. No, I, I, go, sorry. <laughs> I go to the gym, I come back home, and then I make a big smoothie, uh, usually a big green smoothie, something like this. That just helps me replenish everything, get everything. So what's your favorite? Is it, is it the many bananas with some greens in it? Pretty much, yeah. My 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 go to. I, I also am known as the banana commander. I eat a lot of bananas. Um, I would say it's like my bread and butter. You know, bananas and dates. <laughs> so um, you do bananas like water and then greens, like and then. You know, a lot of times, I don't even put any water. I have a, a very very powerful blender called a Vitamix, and uh, it's pretty strong. So like, mind you, again, I've been doing this 15 years. When I started, it was about half the size. But like today's smoothie is uh, 15 bananas and about a half a pound of greens and a little bit of spirulina. Sometimes I have more bananas. Sometimes I have more greens. Sometimes I have green powder. Sometimes I put a tablespoon of flax in there for healthy omega-3s. 
but in general, you know, bananas are a pretty common meal. Uh, if it's not bananas, then it's going to be something else really dense, like um, a date smoothie or mangoes or uh, persimmons when they're in season, a whole bunch of other sweet fruits mm -hmm. is my mainstay lunch. Uh, after that, I really get into work, you know, and I, I, I've done my exercise. I've gotten really powered up. I've eaten my food and then I get on the computer and I'm either answering consultation emails or right now I'm updating my website. So that will be updated in the next couple of days or week, but um, just get into that. And then I give myself some free time after and chill out with my girlfriend and the kitties and, and uh, have a nice and dinner. Then are you, are you still, cause you uh, talk about how you're a Kandalini yoga creator. Yeah. Um, can you tell us more about that? Absolutely. So I, I've like never heard of Kandalini. Well, it's, it's my own brand of yoga. Um, oh, and I oh, cool. Festivals and at my own retreats. Uh, I have some videos on my YouTube channel. I have over 500 videos on my YouTube channel, the raw advantage and, a bunch of different yoga and fitness tapes and videos. Uh, but essentially, you know, like, I mean, I got started with power yoga and Hatha. And then uh, 16 years ago, I found a Kundalini studio that I just fell in love with. They had free yoga classes at like 3.30 a.m. with all the devotees. And wow. being kind of, you know, low income and skateboarder, I was just like, yeah, I'll <laughs> do that. So I started doing it all the time. And uh, long story short, I did it for quite a while. And then I forgot about it. I came into a major breakup and a major kind of depression years later and I'd mm -hmm. forgotten about it, but I started doing the yoga, just the things I could remember. And I developed my own set and I felt so good from it. Like it, I popped out of depression, my digestion went up and I started developing it. And it's kind of basically my Kendalini because it's just so close to Kundalini, Kendalini. I didn't want to call it Kundalini because it takes from Kundalini. It takes from uh, Tibetan, uh, Tibetan rites. It takes from martial arts. It takes from calisthenics and it brings my own personality of being a bit of a jackass into it as well and mixes it up to, to be a little less serious, but at the same time have serious focus on what we're doing. Mm. And it's just, it's just fun and it's play, but it hits all those different angles. So that's what I, I teach a lot of the time these days. And I want to kind of bring it back to one of the first things that I talked about, which is the power of creation, right? Like literally yeah. you, brought together a few modalities that you learned for yourself. And then, you, you know, you had another moment of the downward motion of life and you had to find a solution and you created a solution for yourself. And then now you, you're sharing your work. So I'm inviting some of the listeners out there, if, they're, if that's something that you've been um, exploring, you know, you might have this idea of uh, creating something that could serve the world. Like, why not? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and you're like the perfect demonstration of, of what you're doing, right? Like with, with the uh, nutrition and the yoga and, and you were going to sing for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny because in my life, you know, when things got in the way of what really mattered, you know, like the, the real purposes and passions I had, like, you know, partying and lifestyle got in the way of skateboarding and I started getting depressed and I started feeling separated and it took all of a sudden, okay, refocusing and putting things in priority to bring that back into being something that was ultimately more fulfilling, right? And the same thing with food. When I started falling away from health and feeling good and not being able to skateboard and I learned how to do that, all of a sudden that became a passion and a purpose. And I knew like when I, I told you the day after I went raw, I knew like, this is what I want to do. If I could tap everyone on the head and let them know how good you can feel. That would be the, my biggest dream. You know, that'd be my superpower. Just, just let them feel it for a minute. Cause if they could feel what I feel, they would just be like, all right, this is what I'm going to vector towards. It, it's <laughs> that profound. And you know, it's like when, when that moment, when I fell down uh, into depression again and rediscovered the Kundalini, that was also the breaking point of when I had been raw for five years, but I was straying away. I was in a relationship that was basically putting an ultimatum out there and saying like, it's like, give up on your dreams of doing this and get a real job or, you know, we're not together. And I, ha I was like, I was getting more and more depressed because I wasn't following my true passion and purpose. I, I knew it, but I was holding on like as much as I could to the relationship. And it was, when it was given an ultimatum, I was like, okay, I'm sorry, but I have to choose this. This is my, this is what I really believe is my purpose. I was like, mm -hmm. I remember one conversation where I said like, I would rather die than do anything but this. Like this is so clear in my mind what I want. Wow. I have to do it. You wow. know? And so when that relationship ended, I went into depression. I found Kundalini yoga. 
And within two weeks from there, I started my website, wrote my first book and, uh, and started doing this full time. And I haven't looked back 10 years later. That's, this is all I do because amazing. I, I knew that was my purpose. And I had, I like, I no no compromise. Right. We hear the passion, we hear the purpose. And uh, you know, I just have this wish that everyone around me, my community mm -hmm. and your community, if we can all kind of live in that same alignment, purpose driven life like what would the world look like right because yeah. you're just in like pure joy and you're you were so clear to the point where you had to say no to a relationship yeah it was tough like, you know, but this is my path and you're if you're not going to support the path yeah like it's not going to work so it you know i appreciate that you um are a demonstration of following your heart yeah i, th I and, think it's so important you know i mean I think, I think we're here to be abundant and we're all abundant in different things. And we become abundant by exploring those things we're really passionate about, the things we're excited to learn, the things we're excited to do. And that's, <laughs> what we become, that's what we become empowered with and that's what we become abundant in. And it's through really honoring that and realizing that that has a, a vast importance, you know, and we all have priorities. We all have to figure out these things, but through nurturing those things that make us feel abundant, we can pass that on. And that's how everyone becomes abundant because we're sharing those best parts, those parts that light us up, those parts that make us high vibing and it Beautiful. all comes together. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like my tap in the head of everybody. If I could tap everybody and say, hey, just go for what you love, yeah. what brings you bliss, yeah. go yeah. play and explore. Yeah. You know, whether it's like on the side of whatever you're up to right now, mm -hmm. but actually allow yourself to go there. 100%. I, I yeah. feel that. And the words that jump out to me too are the things you love and play, right? It's like life is play. We can either make it a super serious, stressful thing, or we can oh gosh, find I ways to play. play with it, right? <laughs> to me, and that's I'm very grateful to have children now. They remind me to play. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we can get caught in our mind and be like, oh, this is the structured way it shouldn't. No, no, it's all, it's all fluid. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the skateboarder, the skateboarder in you is all play. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the thing that always drew me to is just kind of, uh, you know, individuality and room for play and self expression, you know, and that's just something that has been a, a theme throughout my life. And I feel really grateful for the parents and family that I have and friends I have that have nurtured me and helped me to really embrace that and feel confident and good about it. Because I recognize some people they're pushed down with that. I've met people who are like, Oh, don't be special. Like literally in some countries, it's like, you don't want to stick out, you know? And some yeah. parents are like, no, you gotta be I mean, realistic. That's probably pretty common, right? Like yeah. don't, yeah. It, don't be special in their way of saying it. Yep. Don't be special. Like, don't stick be out. more practical. You know, that's not practical. This is not the real life. Yeah. You like that. money first, you know, I mean, it's funny because I chose a profession and a career where money was not going to be abundant necessarily. And I didn't care. I was like, I'm just going to follow this, you know, and I, I know I make less than the vast majority of people I know, but at the same time, I travel the world. I don't feel stressed. I make my own hours. I always have enough. And I prioritize the important things. Like I, for me, my important things are food, family, friends, shelter, and pursuing my passion. You know, like mm -hmm. I don't care if I have the most expensive this or if I have that or blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'm stoked. I'm really happy. And I'd rather be happy right now doing the things that are flowing through me with life rather than holding off on life, thinking of a date like 10, 15, 30 years in the road. And again, there's going to be a push and pull and with everyone in their specific circumstances, but the more we can live authentically from right now with the, the joyous, like exuberant spirit of a kid doing the things we love, the more we're going to spread that out as well. And the happier we're going to be right now. Exactly. We, we would spread out like dandelions. Exactly. Yeah. And they're delicious. <laughs> Those dandelions. I love them. <laughs> All right. I, I got to find an expert locally and have them make the dandelion juice for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I mean, look for wild edible tours. Everywhere has them. Like they're, they're growing more and more and it's fun. Really? To, yeah. <laughs> if, sometimes people think that organic food or nutritious food is too expensive. But when you can actually learn, like, for example, as long as it's not sprayed, like not sprayed at all, but as long as it's not sprayed, and I know here in Saskatoon, for example, uh, none of the public parks spray anything, you know, so, but is any type of grass, for example, any grass, it doesn't have to be wheat grass, can be the grass in your backyard, you can juice, or you can take a handful, chew it up, and you want to spit out the pulp, you don't swallow it, you can juice it in your mouth, and it's 
super nutritious. So like, oh my gosh, I I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna let my five year old listen to this interview. <laughs> no, the, like literally the other day, like last week, he <laughs> went to the yard. He grabbed two handfuls of grass. He mm -hmm. came in. He wasn't he wasn't going for raw though. He no. was like, mommy. Can you grab me a pan and some oil? Because I want to cook these, right? Yeah, and yeah. I said, why are you cooking these? He's like, I want to eat it. And I'm like, we don't eat grass. No, yeah. And then, he, <laughs> and then he said, but pirates do. And I said, you're not a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> but, now, so but now you're like, we can eat grass, Bonnie. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Truthfully, yeah, I wouldn't recommend eating it, but you can juice it. And so whether you put oh, it through okay, a really good quality it. juicer, or like literally, if you if you take a bunch, you put it in your mouth and you chew it well, and you just suck the juice out, but then you spit out the pulp. It's it's just like I mean, people go to the health food store and they get wheatgrass juice for a couple bucks a shot. Well, if you just grab a bunch of grass, you get a shot for free, and it's very nutritious too. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying everyone should go do that all the time, but if if money's tight and you want really cheap, easily accessible nutrition, mm. grow a patch of grass in your backyard and just take a handful every couple of days and and chew some up and spit it out. Cool. Well, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure I'm ready for it to go there yet. Like, I'm part of the dandelion <laughs> first. <laughs> Who is this freak and why is he here talking to us about grass? <laughs> so tell us about the ebook that you have for our viewers and listeners and, and also all the other resources that you have. Perfect. Well, I think these will be really great for people. Uh, the first one, if you sign up to my list, there's the, the link there. You get two free ebooks. The first one is called 10 Sure Shot Ways to Drastically Improve Your Health. So talking about high vibing, only two of those 10 are even food related. The other eight are all holistic uh, avenues that anyone can apply and have great results in improving their life, getting more energy, uh, and just feeling and looking great. The second one is called Super Sweet Treats, and that's desserts that you can make as the entire meal. So you can have ice cream for lunch, you can have... Uh, crepes or pancakes you can have smoothies or a whole bunch of other things i believe it's like 20 some recipes that again they're really healthy but they're very sweet treats they're like desserts Ooh, so that's really fun. A good one. and there is actually one other um that you get a couple of days afterwards it's called uh it's an excerpt from my book tierra treat treats so it's mediterranean night so it has a uh, raw vegan falafel tabbouleh tzatziki to make like a mediterranean feast I love tabbouleh. Yeah, tabbouleh is fun and it's pretty easy to make. So, Thank you so much, Chris, for being with us. That was a very uh, enjoyable conversation. I feel at a higher vibration just chatting with you. So I hope um, some of you feel the same. And I'm grateful for your time and your energy and your passion and uh, everything that you're doing in the world. Thank you. Absolutely reciprocated. Blessed to be a part here and to reach out to everyone here. Thanks, Thanks so much, Bonnie, for having me be a part. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm.